All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right, here we go. And it looks like Coyotes are going to go to Utah. Yeah, the hotbed of hockey, Salt Lake City. <laughs> really? <laughs> Quebec's ignored again, eh? Yeah. And, and, you know, that's a beautiful arena. It really is a beautiful arena. It doesn't look so too much on the outside, but, boy, when you get inside, it's beautiful. Aren't you uh, surprised that Quebec doesn't make a bigger deal of getting well, uh, snub nose there? I think they're playing it pretty smart. They'll See, they got to have a team out west. And I think that I think Quebec will get it uh, the next next deal. Yeah, because they said they're going like this might help Quebec because they're going to expand. They say two more teams, so you think Houston's going to get one for sure? And they always wanted kind of one in Salt Lake City, so now they'll have, have two more in the east. east, and then they'll get one in the west. Oh, so you know they're talking Atlanta, but like you know how many times can you go to Atlanta? Oh, <laughs> and uh, I, I think Quebec might get it might get a team after uh, with this, but. See, they say it could be $2 billion. $2 billion. Imagine the guy bought a club for 500000 and uh, Yeah, so, so, so I think what they said is like the, the league is buying the team, the Coyotes, from the owner of the Coyotes yeah. for something. I forget it was. And then they're turning around, and then they're going to sell it to the owner in... Um, and and split so, amongst, and so split. they don't think of it that they're just moving the one team to another place. No, they're it's, getting new, the new owners. It's and, a whole new... Well, ballgame. and that's the thing they wanted. The guy that owns the Utah Jazz is the, going to be the owner of the basketball team. So he's oh. kind of like a big-time guy. Got to have dough to make, though. So the one thing we, you know, we ran a couple of grapevine shows. The Rocket Richard last week was a great, uh, great interview. Oh, yeah. what... You know, you can almost see that guy, though. He, I, I, I could see him. You, do you remember he had slit eyes? Yeah, he was, he, he, like to me, was when he walked, when Rocket Richard walked into the Grapevine studio, he was sizing everybody up. Been interviewed before, and he, they brought up things that he didn't like, brought up. And we told him before the questions, and he was as happy as pig in mud. Yeah, yeah, but that was a great interview. And, you know, funny thing is, I, I, you, you don't have a lot of interviews on Rocket Richard like that in depth and talking, no. about, and talking about and asking um, uh, if uh, he uh, reconciled with uh, Clarence. He, he, of, he talked honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, 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 and the other way, well, I, I've seen him in interviews before, and uh, he just... He's a big, he was guarded. He was guarded. Yeah, that, that's the word, guarded. Well, Tim, you produced those shows, and I think that show got a reputation of, of the, the, the people that were being interviewed felt safe. We, I always went over the questions we, with, the, with the guests, right? Yeah. So they knew what was coming, right? And, yeah. And that was good. So. Yeah, he, it, it was good. It was, it was a good. it was a good show. Larry yeah. Zidal, we got a lot of people saying what a great show that was, the one before, how, <laughs> how it was just like two guys talking about old times. So, but... Uh, so we didn't. We one thing that we did haven't talked about was the big fight between the Devils and the Rangers when all five guys went at it right off the face. I never did. I never saw that before. I think I saw it once before. Well, the Devils and the Rangers did that did yeah. about four years ago. They did the same thing. Yeah, it's the it's the visiting team has to put in, and and he looks at it, and the guy looks at it, the coach looks at it, and sees he's starting five tough guys. So he starts his five tough guys. So you're saying Travis Green, the coach of the Devils, he put his tough guys yeah. out, and then it goes to Laviolette. Yeah. And then he's saying, oh, okay, you're putting your yeah, guys out. And then I'll put my guys out. out. But I never really remember when you were coaching Boston, like guys fighting right, right off the face off. No, like that. I don't. I can't remember. I don't remember guys ever fighting right off the face off either. I, I don't. They used, they usually had to do something. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, Boy, the crowd just was going nuts. Like anybody, this is all oh, you know. Fighting's terrible and all that. The Rangers fans were just just oh. going absolutely bananas. They're tr trying to do their best to, to stop the fighting, and there's more fighting now than there ever was. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of fights. Like and teams that don't like you know the Devils and the Rangers are you know that's they're kind of a, a rivalry, right? But uh, who was it? Buffalo and Tampa the other day, I think it was. No, uh, Washington, Buffalo and Washington got Boy, into they, it. And, and these guys mean it. Yeah. They, they mean it. Yeah. I mean, they tried to hurt one another. They, 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 there's no fooling around. 
I just feel like you know that Rempe, the 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 big tough guy for the Rangers. He's 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 well, got to slow down a little bit. I think. <laughs> yeah. But here's here's the thing though that we, we'll get into that was with Toronto. We were talking about Toronto. You know, Ryan Reeves was playing good. He got a couple of fights. Yeah, and playing good, and then he didn't play him for three or four games. I don't I I don't understand. I just I picked Toronto to go, but I don't know. I'm beginning to wonder. They better dress them in the playoffs. I'll- At least have them on the bench. Is that a coach's decision, or is that from above? No, think? that's well. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like they're they're playing, they're playing that Robertson and they're playing knives ahead of them, and yeah. uh, you know that's good. But they need one of those guys, not both. They need they need Reeves. They need one. They need Reeves to play. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you say Reeves isn't playing, so guess who's doing the fighting? Five foot ten, Max Domi. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, he's I mean, kind of really? Is. I mean, he's sticking up for a guy that's what six foot? How big? I know the the superstars aren't supposed to fight like Matthews, but I mean, there's a there's a guy like Max has to stick up for a guy that's what six foot two. Yeah, but he thinks he's six foot two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, you see Ty in the stands; he's not happy. No, like, he's not. Like, he's probably saying, you know, I fought and got my brains pounded out, so you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. they analyze that to death. No, I, that's what yeah. it was. Ma- Ty's, you know, reaction well, Ty, to the Well, Ty, the Max. Well, I remember we, we were, when we were scouting, right? Max was, he played for Don Mills when we were out, and I think uh, you said to Ty, and I don't think he, he, Ty got, was too happy. He says, well, he goes, Ty has... Uh, he goes, Ty, he goes, uh, Max has your tenacity and your, you know, your grit and Leanne's hands. <laughs> <laughs> did I say that? Yeah. He, he didn't, Ty, Ty kind of looked at you. He didn't think that was funny. No, no, I didn't think that was funny. I thought it was funny. Ovechkin. Yeah, Ovechkin closing in on Gretzky's record. Ovechkin has played 19 games in the league. He's only missed 59 games. That's the one thing that, that that's I, why he's... At that yeah. record, he he's played nineteen seasons in the NHL, and he, and he plays, plays a rough game. And he plays a tough game, and he's only missed fifty nine games. But, but he scored fifty seven open net goals in nineteen seasons or three, and you don't think that's much? I don't think that's much. Uh-huh. It's only three a season, but that boggles the mind that he plays that kind of rough banging style. He and, does. He he does. He's a rough guy, and he only missed. He's only missed fifty nine games, so he's pretty durable. But Gretzky will still be the greatest goal scorer. You could say he's got the goal, but Gretzky's the greatest goal oh, yeah. scorer. You know, that's... I mean, Gretzky did it every year. Okay, Sydney and Dad, Matthews is closing in on 70 goals. He scored last night, so he's got 69 Nine goals, goals with, what, two games less? McDa- and, and remember, Tim, I said he just miss it. If he misses the next game, he'll get... Yeah, he'll get 69. And, he'll um, just miss it. And uh, McDavid, he's not playing. He's he's out. But, but and he has ninety nine assists. So we did a poll on uh, X. We said what was more impressive, seventy goals or hundred assists? And we had close to five thousand people voting, and over sixty percent said seventy goals was more impressive. Yeah, right. But my thing is, eight players have scored seventy or more goals, and only three have had a hundred or more assists. Funny. Yeah, so the guys that got 70, 70 goals were Esposito, Gretzky, he did that four times, Curry, Mario twice, Bernie Nichols, I never would have guessed that, Brett Hall three times, Alexander McGillney, and Timo Solani. How about uh, Phil when he went from 76 goals to 63 goals and he said, You're, uh, you had a bad year last year. <laughs> yeah. 63, 66 goals or something like that and he had a bad year? He had a bad year. Yeah. That uh, goes to show you, right? Keep your, keep your you know. Well, keep, keep the bar low. Sundin used to get 40 goals, 43 goals, 42 goals, yep. 41 goals. I used to say, Tim, he'll get 40 goals this year. Oh, well, that's pretty good, but he'll only get 40. Right. And he cut, then you can't say he's had a bad year. Well, he played it smart. Yeah, that's the way played, to do it. He played it smart. Yeah. And uh, so who are the only, did Kutrevius, who's the only three players who's had 100 or more assists in a season? Gretzky. I did it 11 times. <laughs> Mario and Bobby Orr. Yeah. And Bobby, and you know, I've come to the conclusion that the reason they don't talk about Bobby Orr a lot is that uh, nobody ever saw him play. Imagine, ma- imagine he got, he got a four, I, I'm not going to knock defensemen today, but you know, they get 20 goals and uh, that's really something. He got 46 goals. 
46 goals and 100 assists. And he fought. And 100, and 100 penalty minutes. And 100. He used to fight all the time. And I used to say, why would you, you know, they break his hand or something? We're done. We're done. I remember he used to fight Pat Quinn. And and and, and uh, I used to think, geez, uh, you know, and he'd break his hand or something. Our, our, whole, our whole career is down the drain. My career is down the drain. <laughs> Okay, Dad, this is from Peter Puck, 21, from X. Okay, Grapes, who's the MVP this year? Well, Khrushchev will win it. He'll win it this year because every ballot that he has the most points win. Uh, I still like like McDavid. McDavid is, is my, my, my guy. I mean, he's the best player in the world. He really is. Yeah. So I, the whole definition of MVP is 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 sort of been skewered. It's just whoever gets the most points. That's what it is now. Basically, whoever gets the Hart Trophy usually gets the MVP. Yeah. Oh well, right. that's not fair. It's most valuable player to the team. Well, right. that's right. Michael. Like I, I personally think you know that, and I'm not being a Leaf show. I think it's Matthews because if if Matthews had 35 goals, oh, the Leafs wouldn't. The Leafs would be out of the playoffs. For and sure. they would have been out of the playoffs by two months ago. Yeah, and it, you know the one thing too is you look at. You know, a guy like Sidney Crosby, he's got 41 goals. He's carrying Pittsburgh. <laughs> he's, trying, sure. he's trying to drag them across that line to get to the Boy, players. Boy, he's really something, isn't he? He's, he is. He, 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 he watch them. Back checking. And, and then at the end, uh, giving it to Pasternak, uh, this last, this, on Saturday night, he uh, had a breakaway and took a slap shot at, towards the end of the game. Crosby was giving him hell after the end of the game and all that. So <laughs> it, it it's kind of sad to see. Crosby, though, like you'd like to see him on a good team. You know? Players still like him. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the guys was on Hockey Night in Canada said, uh, you know, Quinn Hughes for uh, for Vancouver. Well, once he gets a job, I think. But the Canucks. <laughs> good one, Dad. Uh, they great. do that. <laughs> Grapes, you talked about the Bruins scoring 300 goals in a season. And. Um, I don't know whether I, t- I told this story or not, but I'm going to tell it anyhow. i have never forget, uh, and I, 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 I honestly didn't know 300 goals meant something in the National Hockey League. I just, just wanted to keep scoring, keep scoring. He says, we got 300 goals again. And I said, oh, did we? He says, yeah. He says, how do we do it? I said, I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah, you, you think of all, like, how many got, like, this year was a lot of goals scored, and only two teams, like, going down to the wire, only, nobody has scored 300 goals. This, and it yeah. looks like, Col- like um, Colorado might get it, and uh, somebody else, well, another team might get it, but. I think the only thing I ever did was, uh, I used to get the, all the defense down and I'd pass the pucks to them, and. And when they'd miss the net, I'd say, do I ask much? <laughs> do I ask much? Just and you guys the- never ran up the score either to get all those goals. No, we- and you could have a lot of times, boy. I knew that you were keeping the goals down. Yeah. We used to play the third and fourth line. That's right. You could have scored a lot more than 300, and I bet. And the funny thing is, I remember one of the guys, I think it was Peter McNabb. Yeah. Come on, power, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the second and third line on. Yeah. You know, I, I, I do think, though, like, it goes to show that Overall, a team will score more goals if it's more balanced than having like Kucherov getting 140 and Absolutely. McKinnon getting. Uh, well, it's easy to check. Yeah, well, we you I mean, we say it all the time with you having 11 goal scorers, 20 20 or more goal scorers on the team. And I I never will forget. I never ever will forget this. They had um, uh, the French connection line, and it 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 could really score goals. Right. So I was Buffalo. That was Rainer Robert. Rick Martin and Jill Perot. Yeah, boy, boy, were they good. And every time I put on uh, Schmatz, Bobby Schmatz, uh, John Rattel, and Mark Hott, he'd think that was our checking line. <laughs> They'd think that's the checking line. <laughs> they think that was, he used to, they, the, the coach used to think it was the checking line. <laughs> and he used to get 60 goals. And they used to take line. the other guys off. Yeah, and he, he'd take the other guys off. They take the French guys off and tabernacle the Calista, <laughs> and he, and they, I didn't know what they what it meant. And, <laughs> and I know one reason why you guys checked them so well was I remember you told a lot of times when you had uh, Greg Shepard that oh, Jill, that, that Jill biggest Perot, mistake I ever made was getting rid of <laughs> Greg Shepard. But Jill Perot, he'd get that puck behind the net and he'd wind up, and he oh. would be—he was like McKinnon. Eh? You couldn't catch him. You couldn't catch him once he'd get going, boy. And he, he put that arm down, and um, 
I used to say to Ch- Shepherd all the time, I say, "How did you ever? How did?" What? He says, the, "The key is to get it before he winds up." Yeah, as soon he, as he got the puck, he was he, on him, he, and he he get, he get on him, and he just kind of just ease him over to the side. Do you remember how you embarrassed Mom and I about? Uh, I don't know if we said that before about. Uh, we, we told you that we thought uh, Rick Martin was the better looking than Rene Robert, oh. and you told Rene. <laughs> and oh, yeah. He came over the house, and he said, "I cannot believe that you think Rick Martin is better looking than me." <laughs> we were going, "I can't believe Dad, you told him that." That was pretty funny. I thought it was pretty funny. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh well, I thought it was funny. Anyhow, hey, Rick Martin. He was better looking than uh, well, Rene. Yeah, he was, but they were, they were pretty close. Pretty but, close, one, but, two. But Rick Martin, well, he was a movie star. But that's when you used to know what the players used to look like. Yeah. They didn't wear the helmet, and it was the 70s. They had beautiful long hair. I think he did hair. wear a helmet near the end. I yeah, think. but he during his hey, their heyday, yeah. none of them wore a helmet. You no. saw that flowing hair. That was, don't you remember what happened that with that? Was uh, I think it was Jill Perot really got, really got hit, and he hit his head like late in their careers. Yeah. And um, and uh, Rick uh, Martin, I think, put a helmet on. Oh, that's right. And then you said, Gil Perot got hit so, uh, Gilbert Perot got hit so hard, Rick Martin put a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I remember that. <laughs> so, Cindy, Dad had a lot of funny clips with Buffalo. Oh. Well, we thought they were funny. Some Very them, witty. But the Buffalo fans didn't think. But one time, um, John Winston got to a fight. I don't know who it was with Buffalo, and then he, in a, I think John might have bit him in the fight, and they took pictures, and they showed you, and they says, there, Cherry, what do you think John Winston bit, bit this, ho- this Buffalo Sabre? And you said, that's what I like, hungry hockey players. <laughs> Yeah, I was pretty clever. Yeah. But remember the sign they had in Buffalo? Oh, I never forgot that sign. Every year they put up if you put up the best sign, they they give you uh season seats for the next year. They had uh they had Wensink and Cherry goon with the wind. <laughs> that was clever. <laughs> that was pretty and good. And it was a huge sign too. Oh, it was it ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean everyone they showed it on TV, everyone got a good laugh on that. Goon with the hockey players. <laughs> One, two. Dad and Cindy, we'd like to thank our sponsors, NorthstarBets.com. It's a Canadian owned and the best place to play live in Canada. They have everything you're looking for slots, live dealer tables, sports book with built in sports bet insight and analysis. And listeners who have an account with spreads.ca, which was their original name, don't have to do anything. Just sign into NorthstarBets.com. And NorthstarBets.com has an exclusive offer to our listeners. If you sign up or deposit with the promo Cherry, NorthstarBets.com will match your first bet up to 100 bucks, and you get 100 bonus spins on the big wheel. It's a limited time uh, offer while quantities last, and it's not available in Ontario. And everybody thinks they know hockey. Playoffs are coming up, so throw a few shekels here and there to see if you know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, it looks like you're going to ask me uh, Leafs and Panthers in the first round. Who do you pick? I picked the Leafs. <laughs> really? After the, last, yeah, after the last couple of games, I don't know. I don't know. The goaltending. Yeah, he, yeah, he kind of made a rebound a little bit in the second yeah. period last night. But I remember that. Like, if you were, like, because it looks like the Leafs are probably going to open up on the road. And I remember you telling me that when, like, when you were playing Philly, that you didn't mind opening up on the I, road. I, we usually didn't open up on the road. We usually ended up first. We always were always first. But um, I, I would, I, I used to like to open up on the road. Just grab one, and then it, it, it's uh, the season's over. <laughs> the season doesn't mean a thing, right? Because I remember, like, it, if. You were saying when uh, that one year, I think it was 77, you guys won the first game in overtime. Ricky Middleton scored. And, you, you know, I remember you and the press were saying, well, now the pressure's on them. They have to win that second yeah. game. And they didn't. You, Terry O'Reilly scored in double overtime. Yeah. Looks like Leafs and Panthers in the first round. I'll pick the Leafs. And uh, the Jets and the Avalanche in the first round. Who do you pick? I'll pick the uh, I'll pick the Avalanche on that one, too. Yeah, but Colorado, <laughs> the Jets hammered them 7-0 last yeah, night. Yeah, well, I'd still take them. Does that mean anything? Oh, it, it embarrass them uh, and like that, you better believe it. And uh, they they won't forget that. Yeah, so it's, it doesn't work in Winnipeg's favor. No, 
doesn't work in Winnipeg. I would think that's not even playing it too smart, even for the coach to no, do that. I, run up the score. Well, not much you can do. The guy, they all want to score. Well, when you didn't run up the score, you'd play your third and fourth. It didn't line. matter about me. I didn't. I I just did what I wanted to do. 